Okay, I drag out the manual and uh, the manual for this thing is substantial. And I've gone through and figured out all the parameters that I think I'm gonna wanna change. Of course, I haven't done any of this yet. Now, one of the very first things that I wanted to do is configure this thing to use uh, an external run stop command with a switch and a, an external voltage input to control the speed with a potentiometer. And you know the manual is very, very clear that the defaults on these are zero, so it should be running with the keypad on the front panel of the VFD. And uh, same thing here, zero is the default for the main frequency source, which is keypad. And so I really have no idea but I got to playing around and looking at the settings on the, on the VFD and it looks like, yeah, that's not the case. The manual is just flat wrong. That's not what the defaults are. And in fact, it appears to already be configured for exactly the kind of configuration that I wanted, so I may not have to actually do anything. So I ultimately, let's, let's talk a little bit about what uh, these terminals do. So there are, there's a whole row of terminals on the front of this thing. First two are RA and RB. That's a relay output, and you can configure in the VFD exactly how that's handled. I'm gonna use that to run the supplemental cooling fan for the motor. Then the next six terminals here are for switch inputs. You have S1 through S5, so there's six switches plus a common. And so you connect switches between these switch terminals and the common to provide input to the VFD. And I wanna use those to connect, this isn't the final one, this is just for testing, a direction switch that I can press in one direction to go forward, center off, the other direction to go backwards. And the reason I'm doing it that way is because that's the kind of switch that's already built into the front of the lathe and I wanna wire up and use that. Switches can do other things like emergency stop, preset speeds, uh, toggle speed up and down, all kinds of stuff like that. I'm not gonna use any of that. So then the rest of the terminals on here are the analog terminals. So there's analog ground, AGND, and 10 volts DC. Now you can't use this to power anything externally, it's just for these analog uh, inputs. And then there are two analog inputs, analog voltage input and analog current input. I'm gonna use the voltage input to control the speed. There's also an analog output where this can be programmed to send out a voltage that describes what's going on with the VFD, whether it's, uh, you know, what speed it's at. There's a bunch of things you can configure on this. So I wanna connect a potentiometer, and this is just a two, uh, two kilo ohm uh, pot that I just you know, grabbed off of eBay, uh, commonly available. If Radio Shack still existed, you could pick those up here. I'm sure you have a local source. And I've just got the three wires. And so the two ends of the potentiometer, I'm gonna connect to the 10 volt and the ground, and then the wiper in the middle, I'm gonna connect to the AVI, the analog voltage input. Okay, and then the switch, I have exactly the same thing here. I have the center wire is black, which is gonna to hook to the common. And then when this switch switches this direction, it connects the common to the orange wire. When I flip it the other direction, it connects the common to the red wire. So this is forward, that'll be orange. So I'll connect the black wire to the common, and then the red and orange, or the orange and red to S1 and S2. Now I was planning on doing this in a series of steps to kind of show how this worked, but as it turns out, nothing was working on the control panel, and when I dug in and kind of looked at some of the settings on the thing, I have not changed anything. This is exactly how it came out of the box, and it was already wired to use these inputs. So let me power it up. Now I have the potentiometer turned all the way to the left, so it's displaying the frequency of zero. And if I turn this, the frequency increases. I turn this all the way around by default, it goes all the way up to 60 hertz. Now I'm gonna start slow. Start around five hertz, six hertz. That's the minimum for the motor. And then let me just switch this into forward and we'll see if the motor turns and which direction it turns. Switch it forward and there the motor goes. Now, that's rolling towards me with the motor in this orientation, and that is actually the same orientation the motor is going to be in 
when it's on the lathe, and that's actually correct. That's the normal cutting direction. Switch it off, motor stops. You can hear the DC injection braking at the end, and then flip it the other way, and it goes backwards. And that's exactly what I wanted. So I don't have to reverse anything. I don't have to set up any of the controls. It works just the way I wanted it to work. So let's try some different speeds. Now, as I increase this, the motor starts spinning up. As we get to the mid range, you can see the motor's kind of shaking and making noise. We'll get through that and it smooths right out. And that's 60 Hertz, which is the designed RPM for this motor. Now that shaking in the mid range is irritating, but I don't really think that's a problem with the motor at this point. I think that probably has more to do with the commutation. Oh, I didn't turn it off, I just turned it down to zero. So let me actually turn it off. Okay, according to the manual here, the very first setting is the control method, whether it's voltage frequency mode or SLV mode. And I want it in SLV, that's sensorless vector mode. So let's see if we can do that. So mode to go to the settings. And that is setting zero, 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 which is already selected. Long press on the enter. And there we are, we're on zero. Let's put that up to one. Long press on the enter. And now we should be set. Let's make sure. Yep, it's now set to one. So I just switched it to sensorless vector drive. So now let's try that and see if that sounds any different or behaves any different. We'll start slow. And sure enough, all that shaking that was in the mid-range, it's gone. Okay, the other thing you can hear here that's going on is you can just hear this thing whistling, and that's because the commutation frequency is set to uh, probably five hertz from the factory. Again, that's what the manual said. Let's see what actually is going on here. Okay, the manual says carrier frequency is setting 1101. So to set a parameter, in this case it's 11-01, and I need to set that somewhere between 1 and 16 kilohertz, and I'm going to set it as high as possible so that I can't hear it. You press the mode switch once to get into the setting mode. Now you're looking at the setting number, 1100, and I actually want to set 1101. So I'm going to cursor up, and it's changing this last number. So 01, enter takes you to the next number, enter takes you to the next number, and so you can just cursor through these, dialing these and rid these things up and down. And I just changed it, so I'm just cursor back through this, and so that's there. Now I'm set to 1101, now I long press the enter key, and now it shows me the value. It's set to five kilohertz, which is what the manual says it was by default. I'm going to bump that all the way up to 16 kilohertz so it'll run more smoothly. And I'll long press on the enter. It says end, so it took the parameter. Now we'll go mode to go back to running mode. And now when I switch that on, we shouldn't hear that whistling sound. I can hear it, but it's very high at 16 kilohertz now. Now there's another setting on this that's supposed to uh, choose how this thing runs, you've got three modes for carrier mode. You've got three phase pulse width modulation, you've got two phase modulation, and you have two phase soft modulation. Now I think by default the manual says it should be set to two phase. We're going to set it to three phase, and what that's going to do is set it so that all of the motor coils are energized simultaneously, creating a rotating magnetic field in the motor, and it should run smoother. So let's see, that would be setting 1102 long press, and it says it's set to one, which is two phase pulse width modulation. I want to change it to three phase, which is setting zero. Now long press on the enter. I'm just gonna press again, make sure it's still there. Yep, it's still set to zero, long press. And now when we run it, it should run 
with the three phase. Let me turn this back down, turn this back to the frequency. And in fact, I don't hear that high frequency whistle at all anymore. Wow, that's just gorgeous. Okay, let's set the frequency limit. So we talked about this motor um, being 10 to one, which means it should be able to go all the way down to six hertz. Now, what about the top end? Well, if we run it at 60 hertz, that's running at its rated speed of 17, 1800 RPM. I would like to be able to run it faster than that. Now, because this motor is sold in both a uh, 1800 RPM version and a 3600 RPM version, I'm willing to bet that the bearings are not different between them, which means this motor, the bearings, which are the primary limit on the top end, are gonna be just fine running at uh, double speed. So I'm gonna set the top end limit to 120 uh, hertz and the bottom end to six hertz, just based on what it said in the manual. So the frequency upper limit is 0012. So let's go to to zero, zero. Apparently what happens is when I try to change the bottom number to something that's not supported by the current uh, setting set that the top number is set to. So it was set to 11. There is no 11, 12. So when I dialed 12 in, it changed everything. So I guess you have to set the top ones first. So zero, zero, 12, long press is 60 hertz. Now I want to make this, I want to run the, whoops. Let's run this all the way up to 120. And I'm doing exactly the same thing here. I'm just using enter to advance through the digits. So that's 120 hertz. Press long press on enter, that stops it. Now 0013 is the frequency lower limit. Long press here and we're gonna set, the, oops. <laughs> I'm gonna press enter to get into the mode where I can go through the digits and I'm gonna set this to six hertz. I don't know if we'll really wanna set, set it, run it at that speed, that sort of just depends on how it operates on the lathe. We'll give that a try though, long press. Okay, so now when I get back out to the frequency, my dial goes from six hertz to 120. And let's just see what that sounds like. You can hear a little bit of low frequency and what that is is the it's the tape on the motor. Okay. Now let's run that back down. Now, you'll also notice this is taking a long time to ramp up and down. Um, and that's because the default ramp time is set to uh, 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and change those acceleration times. That's 0014 and 0015. 0014, set to 10 seconds, let's make that maybe three seconds. And again, we'll have to tune this when it's actually on the lathe. And then the deceleration time is 0015, also 10 seconds, and let's change that to three seconds. Yep. Now to reverse, it should take six seconds total. One, two, three. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm curious if that's for the whole range or for that's for the zero to 60 range. I'll set it to 120 and we'll see how long this takes. Okay, so it's scaling it based on the frequency. So the the acceleration time that I have set to three seconds is just the time to get to the normal 60 hertz. And if you go twice that high, it's gonna take twice that long. So what that means is if we're down at like six hertz, it should get there almost immediately. And it does. So there's one more thing I'd like to do, and that is I would like to set up a cooling fan on this that's controlled by the VFD. Let me go get the stuff and I'll come back and we'll wire that up and see if we can get that working. 
Okay, this is the cooling fan that I wanna use. It looks relatively small, um, but this is a high-speed fan out of a, out of a computer server, and so it actually moves a lot of air. And I should be able to zip tie that pretty easily to the grill on the back of this, and we'll worry about that when we actually install this on the lathe. For now, I just wanna get this so that the VFD is controlling it. So what I've got is a 12-volt fan, and I've separated the leads here, so I've got the red and black leads, which are the, uh, the power terminals for the fan. And then I've got this cable coming in, which is uh, 12 volts from a little wall wart power supply. So I've got the black wires connected together with this uh, test clip. And now the red wires, if I touch them together, the fan spins up. So now what I wanna do is I want to connect those red wires to the relay A and relay B contacts on the VFD and then program the VFD to control those. I specifically want it to turn the fan on when the motor is running at low speed. So let's get that hooked up. Okay, so we want to set up the, the relay. And so we have to first set the output relay mode and that's parameter 311. And you can set it so that the relay comes on when the VFD is running. You can set it so that the it comes on when frequencies are reached or when there's a fault. There's, there's all kinds of things that you can set this to. And we're gonna set it to run with output frequency direction, output frequency detection less than a certain frequency. So when the speed is below a certain frequency, we want this fan to come on. So that is three, setting 311. So let me pop over and set the three first. 311, long press, and that is set to one, which is right now that relay closes when there's a fault. I'm gonna set it so that to five, which means we want it to come on when the output frequency is below a certain value. Okay, and the value is set by 313. So 313, it's currently set to zero, which the manual says is the default. Let's set that to, uh, I'm just gonna pick a number 40 hertz, because I know the fan's gonna cool itself fine at 60 hertz. If we go below 40, I want that external fan to come on. Okay. Now, of course, I'm dialing it down below that, but, the, but it's not actually running below that. So let's put up around 60, start this. Okay, the fan came on briefly while it was below that, but now that we're up around 59 hertz, the fan is stopping. You can see it stopped. And as I dial this down, 55, 50, when we hit 40, the fan should come on. 43, 42, 41, 40, and there we are. We're running at 37, and this cooling fan is running and putting out a lot of air. And so we run this all the way down to, you know, eight hertz. That fan is producing a lot of air that'll be, it'll be on the back here cooling the motor. And when we get up to the point where the, where the fan, the, uh, the fan in the motor is actually generating enough air to cool it, I'm just feeling the air coming around, then uh, the fan shuts off. It's exactly what we want. Well, I think that's it for the wiring and configuration. It ended up being a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be because I thought I was gonna to have to go through and adjust all of these settings. And it turns out it was already wired up for the switch right from the factory. So the next thing to do is to stuff this thing in the lathe and we will work on that next time. If you're enjoying these videos, uh, please feel free to subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.